if we take a step back and look at a coronavirus, we know that these coronaviruses have these spike proteins, and on these spike proteins are receptor binding domains that have affinity for the angiotensin converting 2 enzyme or the ACE2 enzyme or receptor. And so what happens when one of your cells is infected by the coronavirus is the SARS-CoV-2 virus will come around, it'll find an ACE2 receptor on the surface of one of your cells, its receptor binding domain basically latches onto that, and then from there you have a fusion event occur in which the genetic payload from this virus makes its way into one of your cells, specifically a respiratory cell because this is a respiratory virus, and from there the virus is able to hijack your cell's machinery, make a bunch of copies of itself, its progeny, and then the progeny will go on to infect an additional host cell or many host cells. And so what people have been thinking about for a very long time is if we know that the coronavirus really wants to bind to the ACE2 receptor, which is generally stuck onto one of your cells, what if we gave people a soluble form of the ACE2 receptor? And so what the soluble form refers to is that instead of this being, being bound onto one of your cells, this is just something that's floating around in solution. It's soluble. And the reason that's interesting and potentially therapeutic is that if when the coronavirus is looking for a real ACE2 receptor, it encounters a decoy that it thinks is actually a real ACE2 receptor, it would stick onto that and it would think it's got its payload or just found its host cell it wants to infect and basically blow its load on the decoy instead of one of your actual real cells. And the analogy that I'm, I find to be useful in this situation is, you know, when you think of airplanes and uh, fighter pilots, uh, heat-seeking missiles, if you were to think of the coronavirus like a heat-seeking missile, um, and like this is the actual plane that is being attacked by the heat-seeking missile, um, when you see these heat-seeking missiles go after stuff, the planes will sometimes put out a bunch of flak, or these little hot bits of metal or shiny pieces of metal, and this is able to successfully distract or um, obfuscate the actual plane from the decoys and so the heat seeking missile goes for one of the pieces of flak instead of actual the actual um, cell at the end of the day so it's kind of like this is akin to that in that you know if we are able to figure out okay if we give you a bunch of decoy ace2 receptors that look like ace2 receptors but they're not bound onto anything so we don't really care it's really good actually if the coronavirus binds onto one of these decoys because it can't infect your cell anymore and then this could potentially work. The issue with that approach, however, is that the ACE2 receptor, when it's solubilized, when it's just floating around by itself in solution, degrades very quickly. It's not stable, and consequently, the half-life of the solubilized ACE2 receptor is very short, and it can't really be used as a therapy because it's just so short. So what they did is they took an antibody, and they conjugated the decoy ACE2 receptor onto this antibody, and when they did that, they basically improved the half-life of this ACE2 receptor. And now that this ACE2 receptor decoy has been bound onto an antibody and stabilized by it, the hope is that this conjugation or this conjugated molecule has the ability to now last long enough inside of your body and specifically long enough and near enough to your respiratory cells so that when you are exposed to the coronavirus or you've already been infected by it, the coronavirus can't actually find its ACE2 receptor on an additional host cell. Instead, it can only find decoys because there's just so many decoys floating around that it really can't find a legitimate host to infect. And so, um, you know, this is potentially a, a, a treatment and a preventative measure because if you've never been exposed to the coronavirus, the line of thinking is that when this coronavirus first enters your respiratory system, it wouldn't really ever have a chance to infect any cells because it couldn't ever find a real ACE2 receptor. It's just finding the decoy ACE2 receptor, so it's blowing its load on all the decoys. Uh, and then the other line of thinking is that we can use this as a treatment for people who have already been infected by the coronavirus because after the coronavirus has infected one of your cells and its progeny are leaving that host cell to go infect additional host cells, uh, if we are able to successfully distract and obfuscate host cells from the uh, coronavirus's progeny so that the coronavirus progeny can't find legitimate host cells to infect, then that could be another way in which we could mitigate and uh, help treat these types of infections by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So this is some good news. We are currently doing clinical trials. This means that the jury is out, is still out in regards to whether or not this is a safe 
or effective and effective treatment. So research is currently being done on this, um, but it is good stuff to think about and just to remember that there are a lot of very smart, hardworking people out there working day and night to try to develop vaccines and treatments for this virus. And so I hope this video is insightful and helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all for watching. Please stay safe and wash your hands, and I'll talk to you next time.